Hi, Wendy. Thank you so much for coming and joining me on the Mary Just Meets podcast. How are you doing? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> well, I'm so happy you could join. And I just really, I want to say congratulations to you. Like so many congratulations because... <laughs> Because you made the final <laughs> of the Andrew Lloyd Webber um, Cadence oh. <laughs> Test. That's yeah. so cool. I know, I'm so chuffed. <laughs> Literally, because I, um, it, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I mean, if you've watched it, then you'll see I didn't even do a, an actual video for it. I just thought, oh, I wonder, I'll make it up. And then I thought, oh, I'll just record it. And then I decided to just post it. Of course, everyone was doing videos, so I just put a picture to it and... Yeah, so I'm really chuffed. <laughs> it's brilliant, because I loved it. I thought it was really beautiful. It was a really elaborate but also amazing cadenza. Um, so I, like, I was so chuffed for you when I saw that you'd picked it as one of the finals. That's just absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, because that yeah. example that you played like to give us inspiration was a crazy one. I never heard it before. It was all over the place, wasn't it? Yeah, it, I, well, I found it interesting because obviously he played these really intricate Katens as, as examples, but then when it came to their judging, obviously the number of comments that they had about everyone, but it was really funny. They were like, this one's really long, and oh, that one, oh, Christine won't be able to sing that, and things like that. And I thought, <laughs> hold on, you've just given us really difficult examples. What are you expecting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I thought. So I thought that I'd have fun with one because I liked in the example that you played, that it did use the extremities of the soprano's range um, and lots of leaps up and down, right from the top, right to the bottom. So yeah. I thought I'd have a go at that, but he didn't actually give you that much time in the recording. So I know what you did was very clever. You'd like carried on and then, you know, he came back in towards- Yeah, the... I was just tinkling on the piano, hoping yeah. that I was playing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> the one they picked in the end was very, um, very much more Christine. It wasn't really the example that he played, and it was no. really beautiful. But yeah, that she yeah. gave herself a bit more time as well. Um, so I'm thinking maybe, yes, maybe I should have done that. <laughs> but um, oh, I really no. enjoyed it. It was fun to actually have a good excuse to sing and use the extremities of my range a bit. So I enjoyed it. Absolutely. The, yeah, I, I loved your cadenza. I remember watching it and thinking, oh, yes, Mary Jess has done one as well. Yay. <laughs> We were all like, getting involved, weren't we? Women you, power. <laughs> Georgie's was beautiful as well. I loved hers. Yeah. 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 Georgie's got just the most incredible coloratura. I mean, she just, the runs that she does, and it's just so clear and just, oh, it's like crystals. So, yeah, yeah I'm not surprised hers was just amazing as well. It was so. amazing. So, um, when you guys sing together in Ida, would you say that she's mainly given the soprano parts? Because I know you do all the arrangements for Ida, don't you? Um, most of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, yeah, I do most of the arrangements. Um, to be honest, we're all sopranos, um, but obviously we all have different forties, I suppose. Um, and actually, one of Georgie's, one of Georgie's many forties, is that she can actually sing very, very low as well. <laughs> Great. So if we're if we're needing someone who can be really strong on a, a low you know solo or something then usually she's the one that ends up with it or it might be me as well but I struggle a bit more it doesn't sound as solid but yeah she does have this incredible um ability to just sing things really quickly so uh, it, more and more I'm trying to incorporate that into the arrangements um more of our recent arrangements definitely have that um, but as well, I mean, Jasmine has the most beautiful top notes. As, oh, she's just got the most lush top notes. But then this lovely, warm, rich kind of mid-range as well. So I've been trying to, you know, put that to use. Um, and then, of course, Sarah sounds like a Disney princess. So, you know, and she's got just these massive top notes that kind of just float above everyone. So she gets a lot of the desk hats but she can also belt to crazy G sharp, A, whatever. It's insane. Like, I feel kind of, you know, I'm in this group with these amazing super hero singers. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I need to make everyone have their moment to shine. But yeah, we're all, we all kind of champion each other. So it's like you give yourself a moment to shine as well, because I love your voice. Yeah. I think it's oh, thank you. And I love your Wendy Sings Wednesday videos as well. Yeah. They're fantastic. Thank you. 
I kind of I started then just because I was I was finding that obviously I I love singing with Ida and it's basically my full-time job um but obviously that meant that it was always in a group and I just wanted to sing a bit more um kind of solo stuff or maybe do duets and things like that um and basically expand my repertoire and also get to know you know things that I wouldn't necessarily have picked for myself but if people had requested them and that kind of thing and it's just worked out really well I mean I took a break um after Christmas because it um, as you'll know from going away a lot it just makes it really difficult to upload something every week um but yeah it's really nice to get back to it now that we're all at home <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know what you're saying because you go away on ships a lot with Ida, don't you? You're constantly yes. in demand and the internet is the, uh, <laughs> if, it, if it's available, it's not very good and also very expensive. So <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'm sat here admiring all the glittery glinting on your jumper. That's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I love it. Where's yeah. it from? Well, I actually got this from a charity shop. <laughs> Whoa, last year at some point, point. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't know where it's from originally I need to check the label but a, a high street shop probably originally but yeah I try and try and shop in charity shops as much as I can so yeah. that's so brilliant <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing I've for the past uh might be a year and five months now I've tried to not buy any fast fashion clothes whatsoever and I, yeah. I saw you post about that on your social media sites yes yeah I yeah it's it's so important now and i think obviously there are so many things which are at the forefront of media and the news and everything um that obviously it's really hard to pay attention to everything um but it's a it's a really big problem i think um you know in terms of the i mean it's I mean, so many things the environment and economy and workers rights and just so so many things i actually i watched a a documentary actually last year called the true cost I don't okay know if you heard of it no I um, it, I, it was on netflix when i watched it um I, I don't think it's on there anymore it might be on amazon prime or one of those things okay but it basically, yeah it, it went into detail about all the different um parts of the industry that gets affected because of fast fashion mm -hmm. and it literally the true cost it's kind of the name gives it away you know if something's cheap for us here you're paying the price somewhere else or someone else is paying the price and it just it completely changed my mindset so since then i i'm trying to not buy anything unless i really need it or it's something that i just absolutely fallen in love with and i know that i'm going to wear to death so yeah second hand all the way <laughs> yeah, i completely agree i love having a good route around in charity shops but my new love affair <laughs> um, <laughs> with vintage kilo sales oh my gosh they're the most what is that? i don't even know what that is <laughs> what oh, oh, no. oh my gosh oh no <laughs> you're gonna change my life <laughs> oh, you, well yeah it's dangerous it's a dangerous oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no they are so amazing so um you go into this big massive hall where they've got tons of amazing vintage clothes on loads of rails um, and it's all 15 pounds a kilo so you can go and get your like favorite items out from the rails and then you pay for it by weight and it's so cheap <laughs> weight per yeah. kilo yeah honestly it's absolutely amazing i have found some incredible things at vintage kilo sales and they're all in such great nick and like clothes yeah. vintage clothes they were made to last they're not to like last, these fashion yeah. clothes nowadays these fast fashion ones that are just yeah. made cheap quick and uh, just yeah. to fly off the shelves like these things were made to last which is why they're still in such great quality now and yeah, i just absolutely. oh i love it so much <laughs> we'll have oh, to go no. we'll have to go well, now now that you've told me about it i don't have a choice do i so <laughs> i'm gonna have to google it when when we're free i'm gonna have to oh no <laughs> <laughs> no honestly i highly recommend like we'll go together it'll be fun okay okay but they've got so many things like I, I have found some of the most amazing fully beaded vintage gowns at these vintage really? sales yeah so um wow. i did a video recently of one that i'm restoring which is red and gold that one i got yes from, yeah yes. yeah I watched it, yeah <laughs> yeah that one i got from um ebay 
but I've got yeah. a black one that I fully restored that I got from a vintage kilo sale. I've got a red one to do next and a blue one. Um, yeah. Because you pay by the weight, it means you're getting these incredible vintage dresses. Like I think the cheapest one I got, which is still fully beaded and everything was 11 pounds. That's, I mean, it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> I <know. laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I end up finding that more than half of my wardrobe is just evening gowns and, uh, yeah. and things like that. And people ask me, oh, have you got something that you can wear for this? And I think, not really. I, I could wear a ball gown to that. Is that, yeah. is that useful? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Most of the stuff I've got is um, either sparkly um, or Asian influenced in some way. That is yeah, what I'm just yeah. drawn to, like a magpie, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I love the top that you're wearing right now. It's beautiful, all the detailing. Oh, Thank I love you. that kind of the embroidery. <laughs> oh, it's lush. <laughs> yeah, it was the Asian sort of influenced embroidery that caught my eye, caught my eye and my attention. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. love it. I love it. <laughs> and the great thing is that um, when you go into these vintage kilo sales, the sparkly things, they just, I've got an eye for it now. They stand out for me, so I'm like in there running, going, Get the sequins! <laughs> You're a magpie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I get very excited. But when this is all <laughs> over and like the events are running again, it's yeah. such a fun thing to do and less such a fun day out. So, yeah, we'll have to meet up and go to a vintage kilo sale. I feel like that's really yes, important. <laughs> yes, that's, I am up for that. You've sold it to me. Yeah. Amazing. But in the meantime, <laughs> when we dream about vintage kilo sales, I really yes. want to hear more about um, Ida, because um, I think you're one of the founding members of Ida, aren't you? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so basically Georgie and I met on the London production of Princess Ida, which is the, the Gilbert and Sullivan operetta. It's not done that often. Yeah. Um, and yeah, basically, I mean, for me anyway, that show changed my life because it just, I made just some of the best friends, people I'm going to be friends with for the rest of my life. And I also just had the most amazing experience. Um, and just the fact that Ida has come from it is just, uh, you know, uh, the cherry on top of an amazing experience. Um, so Georgie and I met um, doing the show and then um, and there was a couple of other girls as well and we just we wanted to stay in touch um, and so decided to start singing together um, and then yeah one thing led to another and you know our first gig was on the BBC <laughs> live <laughs> and I think we found what? out the day <laughs> yeah what, we, how did that come about <laughs> well I, I mean through the superwoman that is Georgie <laughs> um, yeah, we basically, we found out on the day that they wanted us to sing on um, this week. Um, it's not on anymore, actually. It's finished um, and it's uh, hosted by Andrew Neil. So it's like a, a, a political show, but I think it's quite, do you say like political satire kind of thing, maybe? But it was their Christmas special. And we actually had a gig that night to do carols. Um, so we actually weren't free for it. But Georgie managed to get other people to cover the carols gig. And then we busked a couple of hours before we had to go to the studio and um, just through a couple of the carols. We got there. They said, actually, could you do an extra reverse of this one and shorten this one instead? So, of course, we had to figure out if we knew the words to it. Um, yeah, oh it, was, gosh, it was crazy. But that was the first time that we had actually performed as the full quartet. Because um, before that, I think we'd had one gig as a trio I think Georgie's Georgie was away um so we really were put under pressure but in a way it was wow. in at the deep end and we just hit the ground running in the um, very deep end talk about pressure yeah. your first gig yeah. as a group of four <laughs> and yeah. you're live on the BBC yeah that's incredible yeah, it, was, it was insane then afterwards it was one of these things that you kind of obviously it's amazing when it happens but it isn't until afterwards you think hold on what just happened? <laughs> Did we just really do that? I remember that we, we left the studio and we were just thinking, what, what, wait, what? And then of course it was Christmas and then, you know, it's just, oh, it was a crazy time. But then of course, um, Bridget um, left the group because she uh, went into Phantom of the Opera. So she is now alternate Christine. That's and, um, and then uh, Laura, another of our girls had moved back to Australia. So we've got the lovely Sarah and Jasmine to complete the lineup. So yeah, we just kind of kept wow. going. 
So yeah. Cool. Oh, I just, I was chatting to Georgie and saying how amazing it must be to travel with your friends like that and be in a group, yeah. like, especially for yeah. cruises and all the traveling that comes with it, with that. You guys oh, must have a great is. time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just we we do feel so lucky. Basically, every time that we go away together, we just think, I mean, who who'd have ever thought that this would be something that we could call a job? You know, uh, the fact that we get to travel the world with our friends, doing what we love. You know, it's just it's amazing. And to be honest, you'd think a group of four ladies all traveling together that it would end up getting, you know, lots of arguments or people, you know, rubbing off. But we just don't. I think we're just we don't do that so it's really nice yeah but of course you know, you're traveling you know you're the solo act so we we never kind of get a chance to to be honest really meet any other female acts when we're when we're away I don't know if you find the same thing but no, I never get to meet the other female singers and I get people talking to me about them saying oh have you met such and such <laughs> um, and I've never met any other of the fellow guest entertainers that are female singers because we're never on the same ship together because they no, spread us out no. um, yeah. But yeah I'd love definitely. to spend time with these girls and meet them all it would be yeah. so much fun wouldn't it yeah definitely yeah. but I've heard that you've got a a thing that you do before each show is that right you've got <laughs> yeah. what would you call it it, I suppose it'd be like a tradition, like a a good luck thing. I don't know. It's I don't know if it's a bit weird. You know how <laughs> I like I the sound I, of this story already. <laughs> it's it's very small, but we we have to do it before every show. Um, basically, you know that other groups might put their hands into the middle of a circle. You know, kind of like a, a go team or whatever. Yeah. We do it the other way around. So we put our bums in the middle <laughs> and have a, little, have a little wiggle. And now that <laughs> and now that has been extended, so they went turn around and then we have a group hug and then we basically ah. just tell each other how much we love each other and then we then we go off and we go into the wings and get ready to go on stage. So <laughs> <laughs> too much information. <laughs> no, that's funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Of course, it's always by that. I don't even. I don't even know. I mean, we're just we're really weird. So I think (laughs) just one day, probably someone just did it, and then we thought, oh, let's do that every time. I don't know, but of course, by that point, we've already been given our microphones, and usually, even though the audience obviously can't hear us, the band will all have us in their ears, and obviously, the sound technicians and everyone. So of course, we'll have our microphones, and then of course, at the last minute, we say, guys. We have to bum guys <laughs> and of course to the band they're just thinking what <laughs> what are they talking about so yeah i think we've made a few people laugh <laughs> i guess they don't say they can't see us they don't know that's nice that's nice yeah. to people laugh but has it yeah. been luck or have you had to deal with crazy things on stage even though you have done the what do you call it the bum tradition <laughs> yeah, yeah bums i don't yeah it should probably have an official name shouldn't it um <laughs> I mean, I can't really, in terms of when we're actually on stage, I mean, you'll know from being on the cruise ships, it's very rocky, then obviously it's kind of scary, so we'll take our shoes off. <laughs> um, but there have been a few times, we ha- there have been a few times where we actually, at the last minute, have had to do it as a trio. Um, so, what? Yeah, so basically, I think it's three times now, all for different reasons, well, kind of different reasons, um, and it's always been a, a different, a different combination. So it's not like the same person has been missing each time. Oh there was one God. time, um, this is a couple of years ago, um, before, before Sarah joined the group, and we had someone who was meant to be standing in and coming on the cruise, and then she got sick the morning we were meant to fly to Australia. <gasps> and Georgie and I were already in Australia because we had local leave for a day or two before. Um, and then uh, our fourth um, girl was flying out as well. Um, and basically we landed and then we'd had all these missed calls and messages saying, oh, she's sick, she can't come. So basically we managed to convince the cruise line to let us do it as a trio um, because they weren't obviously going to let us. Um, oh. But we need the entertainment team, so it's fine. So we had to kind of put together this show at the last minute that seemed to work and obviously all the different harmonies and what wasn't covered and all that kind of thing. Um, and then another time I got seasick 
literally 15 minutes before the show. We were coming out of the Panama Canal and I've never been seasick and I haven't been since. And I couldn't lift up my head. I couldn't walk a meter. And they were saying, oh, just take her on stage and she can just leave the stage to go and be sick. <laughs> And of course, Georgie was on the phone to the, um, the entertainment director saying, no, she can't lift up her head. We're doing it as a trio. So they had to, you know, very quickly come up with a trio. I think they did three songs for the first performance. And then about an hour later, there's a second performance and they did the whole show. And then wow. the, I think the third time this happened, um, Georgie had the flu and she couldn't stand up. Um, so again, we had to do it as a different combination, another trio. Oh um, I just yeah that those kind of times could be stressful but yeah because you've got to think the, about the so many thing. things haven't you like who's supposed yeah. to see what when when are we going to cover who's going to cover it and it yeah yeah and it's not just um you know it's not ma a matter of us all just standing in one position for the whole show we've got <clears> you know we like to make it a proper um uh spectacle so you know yeah. we've got I wouldn't say it's dancing but we do have kind of simple choreography at parts and obviously it's tr th th that's just as hard trying to figure out, oh, where can I go here to make it look normal? Well, there's three of us now, so we're going to have to move everything over. And oh, yeah, so <laughs> oh a lot goes into it. But obviously yeah. that happens behind, behind the scenes. So. That's a lot of pressure, though, to be under when you... But the show, show must go on! You know, yeah, you yeah. On. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. Yeah, wow, yeah. that's really crazy. Well, I've been seasick once, and thankfully it wasn't on the day of my show. So oh, I was yeah. very lucky. But it was a storm in the South China Sea on quite a small <gasps> boat. So oh. it was, like, all over the place. I, yeah. <laughs> stuff was oh, my goodness. the walls. It was... <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, my not, goodness. That was not a good day. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah I, I ended up imagine. having to have one of those um, crazy injections that they give you oh, the you oh no <laughs> it was not comfortable uh, yeah i mean i've i've heard of them but yeah thankfully i just i took some um of those tablets and then they just took me to my room and put me to bed so yeah wow. i don't envy you there no <laughs> it wasn't very nice Whoa. oh my gosh but then i had my cabin at the uh, front of the ship as well so it was just moving more than oh it's it's the worst there. at the front isn't it and of yeah. course on, on most ships most of the ones that we've been on anyway, the theatre's at the front of the ship as well. So when you're yeah. performing as well, they just, it's so much worse there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had to be on the stage and take off my heels on the stage before because I've just like yeah. had the microphone on the stand here and yet the waves are making me go this way. And other <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in a way, it's kind of helpful having the, the stand because you can hold on to it and kind of yeah. <laughs> stride it. And like, oh, it's not very elegant looking. I just keep thinking, I hope the audience don't think this looks weird because I'm yeah. holding on for dear life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's no longer a mic stand, it's a Mary Jess stand. There's yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I often wonder what the audience think I've been drinking, like my cup of tea's been a bit stronger than normal or something yeah. when you're toddling about like this and your heels on the stage, but yeah, yeah so it's, <laughs> I think I Most of the time, they're, they're so understanding though, aren't yeah. they? I mean, they, they totally get it. So, yeah. yeah absolutely <laughs> I when I had to do it on the stage once it was ridiculous I nearly twisted my ankle like trying to just move with the waves so I said like you know this cruise company their first priority is is our safety so I'm gonna take my shoes off just to be safe and then like like yeah. got down on the floor in my ball gown to take them off yelled from yeah. the stage talk amongst yourselves <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh it's just yeah it, oh, it was very it's fun and it was um I made him laugh as well and that's always nice I feel happy when I can make an audience laugh <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> that was good but yeah have you always I guess you've always been a singer then um in your own right not just with Ida because of how you guys met yeah yeah I mean um I've grown up in a, a really musical household so um I've yeah I've been singing ever since I can remember um my my dad is a very accomplished musician he plays the piano and the organ and the violin wow. and bass guitar and and he was actually the the principal of music at my high school for 20 years or something like that wow. um and uh yeah so we just yeah my sister and I grew up in a, a musical household and yeah I actually wanted to be a pop singer when I was little but really? specifically Britney Spears just yes. 
<laughs> I had to be her. I mean, I just loved her. Classic Britney. Oh, it's great. But then I got into musical theatre and I'd always sung classical pieces because of my dad and singing in choirs and things like that. Um, but the thing is, like, I'm from uh, a very small town in, I suppose you'd call it rural Scotland. So, um, you know, singing teachers, things like that, there just aren't any, you know, very few and far between. Yeah. Um, by after I left school at 18, I eventually traveled an hour to go and get some singing lessons and then I did my my grade eight exam about six months later and then I you know auditioned for conservatoires and and of course I, I went and studied I went to Leeds College of Music. So wow. that. and then I actually I did opera for a couple couple of years and, and taught singing and then I moved down to London to do a, a one year course in acting. So I went to drama cool. studio. Yeah. Um and then of course after that I got a few jobs and then I met the girls and the rest is history. So, <laughs> yeah. What was acting like then? I guess, did you go into acting because you saw that as a way of doing more musical theatre? Was that your thinking? Um, it was more, because I'd, I'd always, always been, I suppose, an actress. <laughs> uh, that sounds so like, oh. but uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, you know what I mean? Like a, per, a performer, um, you know, uh, I would prefer to be in a role instead of, um, I suppose, doing oratorio, like just recitals and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and yeah, because I'd been so interested in musical theatre and, and I'd done Scottish Youth Theatre when I was 16, but they cast me in Sweeney Todd, <laughs> the only <laughs> musical that year. So I was Joanna when I was 16. Um, nice. But I'd done that to get some acting experience. Um, but again, I because I didn't know anything about you know, what was required really to do a musical theatre course or anything when I was at school. I was under the impression you had to be this phenomenal dancer to even get on the course. Of course, a lot of people who start these courses are novices, you know, at dancing, you know, they can move a bit and you learn on it, but I didn't know that. Um, so it kind of, it was a, do I choose musical theatre? Do I choose classical? Do I choose acting? So it was basically after I'd done opera for a couple of years, I thought, you know what, I think it's time. I really want to go and do acting now. But then having said that, after I graduated, the jobs that I got were musical based. So, you know, it kind of, I suppose, putting all the skills in, in some way or other. Yeah. Yeah. Now that makes sense because I feel like once you do have that acting qualification, it's, it's just something for the casting directors where they know you can definitely do a role. You know, it's that yeah. extra bit of confidence in you, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So absolutely. You, I'm guessing you feel like it helps you doing that year's course to get those musical oh, roles afterwards. 100%. I mean, I loved that course. It was just brilliant. It was really good. And even now I'm still really close with lots of people that I've met on the course who we are really close year. And it was, a, a, it's a very small drama school it's probably the smallest one um so that it was really nice and it was just vocational you know very practical based um so I had the best time and of course it, it got me to London and it got me my first agent and that's what got me into Princess Ida you know so everything happens for a reason I think <laughs> <That's brilliant. laughs> absolutely and I'm I'd love to know more about your experiences at, at music college as well because I really thought that that would be the route for me and end up not being the route for me at all um yeah. but I always thought that I would have that experience what was it like that, that must have been just <laughs> great being surrounded by so many musical people all the time and I mean definitely um, absolutely but I think I think Leeds College of Music um I don't know what it's like now but uh I think it's maybe a little bit different to the other conservatoires again it's very very small but its biggest courses are the jazz course, and then you've got music production, you've got a pop course. The classical course is the smallest one. Um, so I think it's quite different. Um, I originally actually wanted to go to the, well, it was then called the Royal Scottish Academy Music and Drama. What's it called now? Conservatoire of Scotland. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but when I auditioned at Leeds, I kind of, that just changed. I was like, I want to go to Leeds. I just want to go to Leeds. Um, so I think maybe my experience might differ from other people's who maybe went, so like Georgie went to Trinity, Jasmine went to Guildhall, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, I, I had a great time. I was living with musicians. 
and yeah just I think also though in a, an odd way I think obviously as a general thing musicians have to spend quite a lot of time alone because obviously practicing all the time so there were some oddballs <laughs> shall we say some <laughs> interesting characters <laughs> I thought you were being very polite there Wendy <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um, but in a way that kind of you know it, it made it more fun as well because obviously just being from a really small town you know I didn't maybe necessarily come across people like that so yeah it was yeah. good fun you find your characters <laughs> in every walk of life don't you yeah you really exactly. do yeah, yeah. and then um, <laughs> <laughs> you certainly do um, but when you were at uni did you have um was it just uni you were focusing on or did you have a job I know lots of people sort of have a job to support themselves at uni and um, well I'd I'd actually taken two years out uh after I'd left school and I saved um everything that I'd earned so I actually I worked at a coffee shop slash gift cool. shop called called Boogie Woogie. <laughs> I like it already. Um, and it, it, yeah, it was great. It's, it's still here actually, it's to my um, hometown. So I'd taken the two years out to do that and I got singing lessons. Um, and then every summer um, when I came home during uni and then for actually a couple of years after uni as well, I worked at Glenfiddich Distillery. Um, so oh, wow. Glenfiddich oh, sing, single malt whiskey. Yeah, it's just up the road. It's about 10 miles away um, from my uh, hometown um, so yeah I, I gave tours around the distillery and basically they wanted as many people who could speak other languages and because my best friend um, is French and um, she already had a job there the year before um, and then of course I said well I, I can speak French and German <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so right. yeah. I, I get the feeling you're being modest though <laughs> like speaking well, German is like that's really brilliant that's amazing but the, well I don't know but I mean <laughs> I'd I'd kind of I studied French and German at school because for classical singing obviously you're always singing in different languages and you know so I took those subjects specifically for singing um, but I'd always, to be honest, with German, I'd struggled so much and I worked so hard on it. But then um, when I did French, actually, I actually only did it in my very last year of school. And I don't know, what's it called? What's it called in England? Uh, ba basically, I did it when I was 17, 18, and then I did a, like a crash course in, would be the equivalent of A-level. Oh, yeah, A-levels, yeah. GCSE. So I hadn't okay. done the well, equivalent of GCSE course, before. Then. Yeah, so I did literally like one year um, and I took to it really easily. So it was way easier than German. Um, so here's wow. me thinking, oh, you know, I can just, I'll be able to do French tours at the distillery, you know, and maybe German if I have to. Turns out they had way more German speaking visitors than any other language. So I did so many German tours. And for the first few years, it really... I struggled a lot because you you can obviously say something in a language but you have to be open to questions as well and that was the hardest part so I always yeah. started my tour with please ask me questions but speak slowly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so but then That's of course eventually you, know, so you get used to the question yeah but you must have uh, to be able to run a tour in a distillery, that's a lot of really specific language that you need to know and be able to communicate. Yeah. That's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd be able to hold a conversation about anything else now. <laughs> because <laughs> obviously my vocabulary is based on whiskey and how it's made. So Well, I should imagine um, you have quite a few good conversations with Germans though, because they tend to like some beverages over there, don't they, with <laughs> German beer and... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and of course for whiskey, I mean it's kind of a very general thing to say, but the first part of the process is just basically making beer. So it's yeah, Germans definitely liked it. <laughs> ah, I didn't know that about whiskey actually. Yeah, it's basically it's the same ingredients except um, beer has hops in it and whiskey doesn't. But then the kind of the beer that you have from the whiskey is then distilled and then it becomes whiskey ah. but after it's matured for. A few years. That's yeah, I could go into it. I'm not going to. I think it's great as well that you took a few years out before going to music college because um, I I don't think many people know this actually. Um, I went for a consultation lesson at Guildhall. Um, okay. Yeah. And this was 
just as I was finishing my A levels because yeah. I wasn't sure what to do. I didn't know if I should, because I always imagined myself going to music college. I thought, well, I should go and see that and pursue that as an option. But um, my grandma had always instilled in me to make sure I always have more than one string to my bow, to make sure I always yeah. have a backup, especially as I was going around saying to everybody, I'm gonna be a singer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, just make sure you've got something else though, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking, well, you know, I studied Mandarin Chinese for my GCSE. I couldn't do it at A level because it, we Amazing. would have had to have moved house to find a way of doing it. It was just not. Yeah. So I thought, well, the clever thing to do would be to do my Chinese um, at uni so that I could yeah. strengthen that second string to my bow. But I had that call in of going to music college. So I went for a consultation lesson at Guildhall and they said um, to audition, but in a few years' time because they didn't take people when they're coming fresh out of A-levels because your voice isn't mature enough to cope with the training. Yeah. So it was that the people at Guildhall, they said to me, go and do your Chinese first and then come to us. Okay. And yeah. thank goodness they said that to me. Thank goodness they said that to me. <laughs> Otherwise I might have yeah. like gone off to music college and not done the whole Chinese thing, which like, I can't even imagine what my life would be like if I hadn't done that. So um, yeah, I, know, I yeah. imagined that. I would go to a music college and then it just ended up not being the way that my life went. Um, no, yeah, yeah. I love that idea of being surrounded by so many great singers. And so I think it's brilliant that you took that extra time out and had your singing lessons to prepare yourself for then going. I get, did, is that why you took the years out? Because they wanted people who were slightly older or? Oh, well, I mean, it's going back to the, I, by the time that the end of school had come, I still didn't really know how I was meant to go about, you know, going to train. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I went back into school for uh, like another meeting with my guidance counsellor, guidance teacher. Um, and she said, look, I, I, someone I know um, knows the singing teacher. I'll give you her phone number. And then I, I phoned up um, the wonderful Alice Dennis who I love, um, and uh, and then yeah, we arranged my first singing lesson. So it was more just basically, I just happened to be that age when I figured out, oh, hold on, I should probably go and get some singing lessons and actually, you know, learn some technique and, and things like that. Because before then, I mean, you'll just, you'll know yourself, you just kind of just sing whatever is natural to you, you know, and that's why I'd done so much musical theatre, because belting is just a natural thing for me, you know, whereas the classical side, it was much more, focused and thinking about what I had to do mm. um but yeah like you know obviously that meant that having the two years out meant I could save up enough money to um you know support support myself to an extent I'm very lucky that my parents helped me an awful lot um but you know I I had a, a, a good amount saved up that meant I could uh, I wasn't solely dependent on them yeah um, but yeah absolutely I I actually I found that I was actually a little bit older than most of the people on my course um, I don't know if maybe because um, Leeds College was a, was small or I, maybe they just did, had different things that they looked for in the people who auditioned, but there were a lot of people who had just come out of school, a lot of instrumentalists anyway. Um, but I, yeah, I definitely think that having those extra couple of years, even if it's not necessarily a, a voice maturity thing, it just kind of your mental you know, your, your mind frame, you're just that little bit re more ready for it, for me anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. But what made you go for that opera course and not the pop one after you said about wanting to be Britney? <laughs> Were you well, tempted to be on honest, one? I didn't even know until I went. <laughs> I, um, because I just thought, oh, well, I'll just look at the um, conservatoires. So I just looked at the list of them. I didn't even think about the um the, the other courses that they had um i remember i'd i'd got in touch with someone at mount view to ask about the musical theater course and um, oh, yeah. i still i still felt clueless I, you know i didn't really know um so i thought well, at least with singing i know that i can sing you mm. know so i'll just i'll go for that then um, yeah. i you know i i've done you know dance lessons and things like that since then so yeah which all is helpful strings. with the choreo choreography that you've got with Ida, I guess, doing yeah. that. Yeah, it's main, mainly armography. It's a lot of the da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, that's about it, really. <laughs> yeah, I love that.
It's, yeah. uh, I remember the best piece of armography I've ever seen. Um, it was really amazing. It just reminded me of it. Um, I was watching Cardiff Singer of the World. Oh, yeah. Which, oh my gosh, is the best television you will ever see. <laughs> yeah. I sit there in awe of these singers. Um, I know. And there was an incredible Mongolian, um, I think it was baritone, and his voice was incredible. He could paint a thousand words with his voice. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, but he'd stand there so composed. And then it might be once per song, maybe not even that, maybe just stand there for the whole song. But he got to this most incredibly emotional part of the song and just opened his arms and invited us in. And it was yeah. the simplest, most incredible movement because then you felt like he was opening himself and opening up the doors to invite you into this purely emotional world that he was portraying with his yeah. voice. And you felt truly welcomed. And I thought, yeah, that is so powerful. It's just absolutely. That. I think definitely oh. in so many occasions, less is more. You know, it's like you remember that one part because it was just so well thought out, you know, definitely. Whereas obviously if it's just constant, then it kind of loses meaning. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that was amazing. Cardiff singer, I love. I just, if only they could do it every year and not every two years. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glued to my television watching it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I loved it so much. Um, especially, I can't remember which year it was. Um, I think it was the year after Jamie. Uh, a soprano from America called Jamie, was it Bartlett? Can't quite remember her name. Um, there was a wonderful American soprano who won one year, and then the year after, well, the couple of years after, um, there was a coloratura soprano on, and she sang the doll song. And I've always loved that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And the conductor even came over when she went, oh, um, came over to like redo her bow. <laughs> oh, did he? Oh, I need to find that on YouTube. I don't remember that. Oh. I, I just like, I loved the theatre of it, even though it wasn't in that kind of setting. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I love that so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Aww. Anyway, <laughs> that Cardiff singer, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> um, because it, you've got so many different talents with doing all of the, the distillery stuff with your languages, all the different stuff you can sing, all the arrangements and everything, like, and traveling the world. Do you get time for hobbies? Like, have you got other stuff? Do you allow yourself time for other things? What do you do? <laughs> like, well, <laughs> spare time, what would you do? Well, to be honest, well, I've got a lot of spare time right now. <laughs> so, but I mean, I, I've always been a really big fan of cooking and baking, that kind of thing. Um, oh, my, amazing. my mum has always been the most incredible home cook. Like, oh, she's just amazing. She actually, I think she used to give classes on cake decorating, I think, oh, cool. a couple of decades ago and that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, I've had an amazing woman to learn from. So I, I love to do that kind of thing. But obviously, when you're away so much, um, and then when you come home, it's not like you can just go and buy a ton of fresh things and, and create something because then you're away again. So I end up having things that have been in the freezer, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> um, other than that, I mean, obviously trying to keep active. This has been a really good time, actually, during um, isolation to try and like find out what I really like because I've tried to you know I've tried to go to the gym a lot I know that the, the girls have their things that they like doing like so Georgie you know she's on the cross trainer she loves to do that and smashes out like an hour and a half and it's incredible wow. um, and um, uh, Jasmine does yoga like so we all have our thing and I so I've been trying to kind of figure out what I really enjoy um so I've actually I started doing Pilates um Hi. with my lovely friend Bethan and um, he used to be in Ida and she uh she's doing uh classes on Zoom every Thursday she might be doing another one as well she might do it twice a week um oh, it's cool. just amazing it's so good and I feel so much better after every class it's just it's just the best thing if you've been wanting to try Pilates or take up Pilates then um try one of her classes because it's for any level she does the different variations for people you know who who I mean she says oh if you just had a baby don't do this and you know that you know she's really always thinking about who she's got um watching um but as well as that my dad bought well it's called a rebounder but it's a trampoline basically which I have named Trevor 
<laughs> remember the trampoline. <laughs> That's right. Um, but basically, he's he's done so much research into this, and it's just trampolining is incredible for you. It really? works every yeah. Who knew, right? It works every single muscle in your body, apparently. So this is including your eyes and like things you wouldn't even think about. It's to do with like the resistance against the gravity. It's amazing, mm-hmm. and as well as that, it it what's the term it like drains out your lymph system or kind of keeps oh, you going so it helps to yeah yeah it gets rid of like the toxins and things like that which is incredible so of course you don't really you know how after you work out and then the next day even if you stretched you're like oh I'm in so much pain you don't really get that from trampolining because it's worked out so many of the top it's just it's amazing it's so good so I, I highly recommend it. it Trevor <laughs> do you like name your household items like quite regularly or well, a little bit. I always name the the cars. So oh yeah, that's if, quite. You know, normal, if you yeah. get a different car, then I'll name that. But also, I've got a an exercise bike that I've had since I was really little. I've not really been on it, but I've decided to call her Ellie. So it's Ellie the exercise bike, and then Trevor <laughs> the trampoline. But I kind of realised I'm like I'm going to go and have a bounce on Trevor. <laughs> and my dad's like, okay. <laughs> like, it's not mm, maybe not I'll just mm, yeah. oh my gosh that's so, so funny oh, yeah. wow. oh that's good I guess with Ellie you can say I'm going to go ride with Ellie maybe that's a bit yes yeah. exactly <laughs> I think I need to reword it kind of yeah well, I, I think um, on that note I might leave you to have a bounce on Trevor <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but thank yeah. you so much for coming and joining me on the Aww. podcast. So no, thank you for stop. having me. It's been so much fun. I <laughs> yes. loved it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And um, I will look forward to going to a vintage kilo set with you as soon as Yes, possible. I can't wait. Yes, it will be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I will look forward to it. Thank you so much, Wendy. Bye. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Bye now.